Last episode, we spawned into a vast ocean. We settled on an island and started to expand it, explored some caves, built a house, completed lots of quests in our quest book, built some simple create mod machines, and explored a much bigger island that we found. All commentated in a very high-pitched voice to try and make things sound exciting. But we don't need gimmicks because we've got gear mix. Gear mix. Gear. Gear. It's create model, right? So we ended last episode with a bit of a dilemma about whether we should stay here or move over to the bigger island that we found, which is over behind me quite a long way away. And I want to make that decision pretty quickly because in this episode, I want to make a start on my storage. And once I've done that, I don't want to have to move it again. So it's decision time and the decision is... We're gonna stay here. But either way, for my storage, I'm going to need lots of wood. And I wanna get a bit smarter about how I'm obtaining that wood. I'm gonna need a bit more space for that though, because this island is a bit on the small side. Placing all those planks is taking absolutely ages and using up what wood I do have. So I've got a better idea. And to help me with that, I'm making an upgrade for my backpack. The tool swapper upgrade will let me put all of my tools in my backpack. And when I try to use the wrong tool on a block, it will swap to the right one. Another clever thing I'm going to make to help with my inventory is the toolbox. So with my upgraded backpack on my back and my toolbox in my hand, I'm heading down to the caves. And as I reach the bottom, I'm going to try and mine the floor with my sword and it will instantly turn into my pickaxe. Thanks to that backpack upgrade. I found my first zinc and that has completed a quest, but I've no idea what a zinc is for at this point. I guess it's something important if it's completing a quest. I've put some of the items I've been finding into my toolbox and what this lets me do is I can link some of those toolbox slots to my hotbar slots. And then when I'm mining, as long as I'm in range of the toolbox, the stuff I'm mining will go into the toolbox instead of into my inventory. So if you watch that deep slate slot in my hotbar as I mine more deep slate, you'll see that it flickers up to 33 and back down to 32 and that's the blocks going into the toolbox. And it always leaves me with 32 blocks in my hotbar. So if I was placing the deep slate instead of mining it, it would keep putting the blocks out of the toolbox and topping up my inventory. Pure genius. It's just a really useful quality of life thing, both for mining and for building. I love it. But anyway, having done a bit of mining, I found what I was looking for down there, and it's this stuff. Let's just grab another couple of buckets of it. If we take a look at the map, this is what the island looks like now. I've joined it up to one of the smaller islands and there's a few other little islands around that we could do the same to. A really cool feature of this map is it shows the mobs around us, so we can see this is an orca over here. And if I zoom out a bit, we can see some other features. So over here is the shipwreck that we found when we first spawned into the world. And what we can see really clearly is the island that we explored in the last episode. But it's pretty obvious that we didn't explore all of it because that northern bit is still blacked out. It's still unexplored. So just to be sure that I'm not missing out on anything, I want to get over there and have a look. I'm bored of placing lava, so let's put this in there. And a boating we will go. I think I can see land ahead. Oh now, hold on, is that a village? It is a village. Oh, I can't believe that. That's so close to my base. I wish I knew that was there earlier. The villages in this pack are fancy villages, which means you've got fancy houses and better loot. Sometimes there's a working windmill with a grindstone, so if you find a village early on, it's a great way to get ahead with some of those create components. Right, let's get in there and see what we can find.
back at base and down in the mines, I've managed to find some of the blue shiny things. Let's put a torch down so that you can see them. That's better, look at these beauties. And I needed to get those diamonds because I had a minor incident making a cobble generator. What I've got back here is a big cog attached to the water wheel and a little cog attached to that. Then it's big cog, little cog, big cog, little cog to get a small cog spinning nice and fast. That was hard to say. Little cog is going to have a drill attached to it and that's just behind that cobblestone you can see here. First though I'm going to make a bit of a mess underneath here to get a system in to take the cobblestone away and put it into the chest. I'm going to pop a shaft in here and that should hopefully hold the water back when we break the gravel. And now we can make our first ever conveyor belt. To power the conveyor belt I'm just going to bring the shaft along from the middle of the water wheel for now. And we're going to put a gearbox on the end here to take the power around the corner towards the belt. The problem now is it's going around the wrong way but a second gearbox solves that problem for us. We just link it up and now we have a fully functioning conveyor belt. We just need to shove a chest on the end of it and a funnel going into that chest. And now all I've got to do is put the drill back on and we have a fully functioning automatic infinite cobble generator. Or at least we will do when I reconnect this cog that you didn't see me nick earlier. There we are, that's a beautiful thing. Except maybe it's breaking the cobblestone a little bit too fast for the belt to take it away. So I think we need to look at speeding that belt up a bit. So instead of it being connected directly to the water wheel, I've put a few more cogs in to connect it up to some of the faster moving bits. And hopefully that will do the trick. With that cobble farm done, I'm now going to start work on my tree farm. And this is quite a common technique in Create apparently, where we place a water wheel horizontally to give us a vertical spinning shaft. But I want mine spinning the other way, so I'm just going to put the water in the opposite corner. I'll plonk a temporary solid block there and a mechanical bearing, but that's where I'm going to stop telling you what I'm doing. Because the tree farm I'm making is actually based on the design for a crop farm, and a step-by-step -step tutorial for that farm can be found in a video by Bruno Danoy, and I'm linking the to that in the description of this video, so if you want to find it, go and pop down to the description and see it for yourself there. So cutting to the finished product, here it is, my tree farm. You can see there's an arm with a bunch of saws on it that's going round and cutting away the trees. When it chops a tree, it collects all the goodies and puts them into the storage down there. The only thing this farm doesn't do is replace the saplings after it, so I'm going to have to do that manually for a little while. But I do have a plan for doing that, and we'll probably do that in the next episode. Mainly because that involves making one of these things, a deployer, and it's made of some strange stuff that I don't think I'm quite ready to make yet. But now that I've got an infinite source of wood, I can get back to making my storage, and believe it or not, that involves coming back down here to the mine. And that's because as well as all the wood in the world, I'm going to need some nether quartz to make a draw controller. And there's one place I know I can get nether quartz from. I mean, the clue's in the name, right? So let's light this thing and go through and see what we can find on the other side. Here we are, and it looks like we've got a solid wall of basalt there, and a massive drop into the basalt delta on that side. Wonderful, what a great spawn. Let's try and place a block to stand safely on. That's better, for a moment there I thought I was never going to get out of that portal. I'm going to mine my way round behind a portal to try and make a safe place to stand on on that side. And to keep me safe I'm going to block up this side. I don't think I'm going to find much in the way of nether quartz on the surface of a basalt delta, so I'm mining a staircase down underneath it, hoping to find something down there. And at last I've found some, we're going to need some quartz to make some comparators, and we need two comparators for our draw controller. And here's my drawer controller in the middle of the floor and I've already put some sets of drawers in as you can see in the top left of your picture. But I don't want to mirror that on the other side and that means this is where I need to place my block. I'm going for 5x5 five five sets of drawers and putting three of those together to make little alcoves. And I've got three of those alcoves on each side. We just need to make sure both sides are linked up to the drawer controller and we do that by using these trims. And we use some more of the trims on the outside to make sure we're linking the corners together and linking the sections together too. I want to enclose this storage in some kind of building, 
And for that to look good, I think we're going to need to make use of some of the fancy blocks that we can use with the workbenches. So in the workbenches bit of the quest system, we can see there's several different workbenches we can use for wood and stone and various other things. So let's make a couple of those and see what we can do with them. Here's the mason table, which is kind of the stone workbench. I'm just going to pop it up here for now out of the way. And if I grab a stack of tough out of the storage, let's see what we can do with it. Wow, there's all sorts. Look at all this stuff. Glad tough, simple tough pillar. And look at how much I can scroll down. There's absolutely loads of it. Well, while I'm here, let's see what I can make with stone. Lots. I can make lots of things with stone. Wow, this is a builder's dream. I mean, together with the framed blocks, you could make just about anything with this stuff. If only I was a decent builder. Well, I don't think this is a sensible long-term place for my mason table, so I'm going to move it. And I think it should live here in the stone section of my storage. And now I'm going to make a woodworking table or a carpenter's table. And I wonder if we can make as many things with wood as we can with stone. This can live here in my wood section. And let's see what it can do with these birch logs. Oh, okay, so there's a bit of variation in here, but not as many varieties as there are for the stone. Interesting. Well, I'm going to play with these new toys and let's see what I can come up with. So that's my storage done. I felt these walls were a little bit plain either side of the entrances. So we've got a little kind of motif thing going on there. And the roof, it's not quite what I imagined, but I quite like it. You can get some really odd shapes of these framed blocks. And yeah, I quite like that. It's kind of quirky. It's kind of me. In particular, I like the pattern that we've got here on the roof from the carpenter's table. Unfortunately, we couldn't get these blocks, these uh, slabs to lay the same way as the others, but you can't see that from down here. No one needs to know. I probably shouldn't have told you about it, to be honest. And going inside, we've got all of our storage on both sides. So this is mainly for stone and stone related things. Some of this stuff over here, I'll probably be moving to a different section. And the next section along is for wood. And again, we've got another couple of bits in here, which I'll be moving out in due course, but this is mainly for wood. Then this one, I've mainly got being food in here and we've got some mob drops over there as well and various other bits, but there's so much stuff you can get with Farmer's Delight. I'm really uh, sure that we're gonna need a lot more space for that as well. So we've got all the spaces over here that I haven't put anything in yet, but I expect this middle one will be where I put all the create blocks, my redstone and that kind of thing as well. All the kind of technical stuff will go in here. In each of these 5x5 five five walls, there are 100 of these individual drawers. So we've got plenty of space. Hopefully it's going to be enough. And if not, well, we could extend upwards. We can extend downwards. 
we'll find a way. Well, that's almost it for this episode. But before I go, I just want to take you back over here to where we made our cobble maker because I've put another couple of things in over here too. And I didn't really explain why we wanted a cobble maker in the first place. So if I get a bunch of cobblestone out of there, what I can do is I can chuck it in this chest up here. You can see we've already got a load. And that will go through here into our millstone and that turns it into gravel and I can turn the uh, gravel then into useful things by putting it into this washer here. Takes a little while, but that will turn it into flint and into iron nuggets. So far from being just a plain cobble generator, this is actually sort of an iron farm. Let's just grab those from there. There we are, 13 iron nuggets from one stack of cobblestone. But as you've seen, I am manually taking the cobble from over there to over here and then manually taking the gravel from over there to over there. And all of this is a bit of a mess. It needs tidying up. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it. And uh, that's what I'm gonna try and do for next episode. I hope you'll join me then. See you then. Bye.